Uh, I'm gonna, I, my name is Unso, and I'm going to talk about semantic parsing with Freebase, a very large yet widely incomplete knowledge base. Um, this is a joint work with um, Luke Jarmoyer and Tom Kiyoski and many more. So here we, I want to talk about question answering group knowledge base. Um, as Ray has talked a little bit, that here we are given a natural language query, and semantic parcel will give you a logical representation that can be executed against database to get the answer that you're looking for. More generally, you're getting a query, um, knowledge-based query, and then get the answer. There has been a rich uh, related work on these things, and people have actually worked a lot to build this large-scale knowledge bases with the facts populated in that, and data sets, and then a lot of work on it. Another source of information when people are trying to do question answering is raw text, like news articles or Wikipedias. So why sometimes people try to look into knowledge base and like put a lot of efforts to build this large scale knowledge bases when there is large amount of raw text lying there? The benefits of knowledge base is that it allows you to build some compositional um, queries um, that can cover something like counting or getting the argmax or conjunctions more gracefully than just looking at the raw text. So here, how many children does Jerry Seinfeld have? Even though there might not be a sentence saying it, you can count the number of children that's listed and then get the answer. And same with more compositional queries. So in this talk, I'm going to talk about how are you going to represent meaning and grammar when you are trying to build those kind of meaning representation, and how are we going to do question answering when you are dealing with this large scale knowledge bases to do question answering, and uh, a little bit about populating the knowledge base when there is no facts there. So we represent the meaning with this uh, kind of um, formalism. But basically, the important thing here for the purpose of this talk is that these kind of predicates that um, is typed to have either entities or numbers or functional type that takes entities and numbers and um, um, phrases of same meanings have the same types, even though can have different um, structures. So equivalent semantic expressions have the same type. Uh, we use combinatorial categorical grammar as our uh, formalism, which has lexicons, which has words, syntax, and semantics. And we have some set of combinatorial that can combine this logical form into a bigger logical form to build a more compositional things. Oh. OK, so feel free to stop me with the questions. Um, I will go over it relatively quickly. Um, the problem when you're trying to map a natural language query to a knowledge base is that the meaning representation that you should be aiming for is dependent on the domain. So even though it has the same uh, expression, how many people live in Seattle or how many people have won the Nobel Peace Prize, depending on which part of the knowledge base that you're looking at, even inside the same knowledge base, it should be mapped to different um, logical forms. So this complicates learning um, a little bit. And uh, so we have built um, this open domain question answering system, we can handle this ontological mismatches. So in this work, uh, we presented a couple years earlier, we are given a natural language query, and we first map into domain independent logical form that does not, uh, is not defined by the knowledge base. And then later, um, modify this logical form that's originally from the sentence to match the knowledge base that you're looking for. So depending on whether you are looking at the yellow pages or free base, even for the same question, it should map to different logical forms. So in one slide, we do this domain independent parse and later go on to ontological matching step where you can modify this logical forms while you are preserving the types that I have introduced earlier briefly. And then you replace uh, things to the predicates in the knowledge base to get the answer that you're looking for. When you are learning this parser, uh, we treat most things as latent and learn from question and answer pairs. And sometimes we get correctly that can build this kind of logical forms to get the answers. Um, of course, sometimes the parser does not give us correct um, logical forms that we were looking for because we failed to match, do the structure match correctly, uh, or sometimes query itself was a little bit ambiguous. So suppose we have this like semantic parser that relatively works and this large scale knowledge bases that contains like two billions of facts. 
people still would like to look at the raw text to get the answers. Why? The main problem with the uh, knowledge base, I think Ray was taking that it has a fixed ontology, and that fixed ontology is, however large it is, it's always very sparsely populated. So we studied how um, empty the knowledge base is uh, in, the com in, the, in the next work, that we looked at some questions and then see how, whether that can be answered in this knowledge base with two billion facts. Um, so first two questions here, how many people live in Seattle? What part did clay is stimulus can be answered by the knowledge free base and semantic parser. But those four questions cannot be answered by the knowledge base, even though you have a gold semantic parser. First two cannot be answered because knowledge base itself is a missing fact. For less popular entities like Anyang, which is a small town in Korea, knowledge base does not have facts. <coughs> Uh, on this second set of questions, they cannot answer the, the questions because the knowledge base does not have the schema to represent this. Even though um, it's a large, large knowledge base with like 20 um, types, it doesn't have a concept of short story writer. It's more serious when you consider some more abstract concept or subjective concepts such as popular or suicide that's less well defined. And usually knowledge base does not cover this um, assets that people are interested in. So we studied how serious this problem with this Wikipedia category data set, uh, which is uh, noun phrases of, uh, of a structured noun phrases of pages that Wikipedia belong. So if you go to any Wikipedia page and scroll down to the bottom, there is a list of categories that this particular entity belongs to. You can see a lot of noun phrases. For example, there is film directors from New York. And we started to map this phrase into the knowledge base, to free base. Like here, it's like place of birth, New York City, profession, film directors. We labeled like 500 of um, these categories and see how well the free base covered this. First, we cover how many of the facts are covered in the knowledge base. And for this query, social democratic parties in Greece, Wikipedia um, lists like 23 entities. But when you uh, execute the gold query into the knowledge base, it only gets four out of it. So about like more than two thirds of the facts were missing in the free base. The second we studied was schema incomplete. We see how many concepts cannot be represented with the uh, free base schema. And we found this kind of concept described in or American radio program, the relaxed side, these kind of concepts cannot be represented in the knowledge base. As I said, subjective characteristics and opinions cannot be captured in knowledge base schema usually. So knowledge base is very sparse. Um, so we decided to work on this knowledge base population. When there is this sparseness in two dimensions, the facts are missing as well as the schema itself is missing. So we are trying to bring um, information from raw text back into knowledge base so that you can um, answer the questions. We specifically focus on noun phrases. Uh, William Summers and Moon, British prairie white novelist and short story writer. Um, noun phrases is a rich source of information, have like interesting noun noun modifier relationships, and usually have not studied very well in information <laughs> extractions. Um, our task is like this. You are given an uh, entity and a noun phrase describing that entity. And you are trying to map that noun phrase into the knowledge base when you can map the knowledge um, into the knowledge base, such as nationality. And when you have something that cannot be covered by knowledge base schema, you leave it as open and just extract this um, open information extraction style um, triplets. So we use the semantic parser to get the logical expressions. And then we pair this with the named entity that's given. And then uh, for some of the things that can be fully grounded into the knowledge base, you can replace the um, query entity with the given named entity and you can assert a fact back into the knowledge base. Um, and for things that cannot be mapped into the knowledge base, we explicitly model these relations and types as open relationships and open types and uh, try to map these into a combination of knowledge base uh, relations and these open relationships and open types. 
So overall, we do semantic parsing for IE, uh, similar to the previous one. We do the domain independent files first, and then do ontological matching step. Uh, but now we introduce this open concepts because we cover relations that's outside of knowledge base. So previously, we have considered everything as latent and then learned from this question answer pairs. The caveat here is that this only works when you know the answer for this question is in the knowledge base. Actually, when they were populating this web question data set, they have to throw away like 93% of questions because it was not answerable from the knowledge base. But we now have a very um, knowledge issue provision from unfiltered data that um, we know that the semantic parser, even though it gets to the correct query, it only gets um, some, like, it will not match up with the signal that we have. We thought that it would at least give us 23 entities, but it will only return four entities. So this makes learning uh, with this all latent things a little bit tricky. Um, so we instead decided to learn from a small supervised set uh, to get the CCG part, and then later um, learn uh, with a small supervised set that has um, annotated logical forms. And then for the later part, we're going to use these large-scale resources, which is kind of imperfect supervision, but has some signals about how to map text into the um, freebase schema. So here, for example, if we're interested in what the, um, this is a very large-scale resources, which has 7 million category entity pairs and 18 million entity to freebase attributes pairs. Um, and we're going to use this in this way. So for example, if you want to know what does word Pixar means in freebase, you found all the categories that has Pixar as a substring, and you look all the entities that belongs to those categories, and then you collect the attributes about this entity in the freebase. So this gives you a rough estimate of alignment between string to entity to freebase attributes, and then you compute this PMI, uh, point one mutual information, and use it as a strong feature to guide your learning when you're trying to map to the knowledge base. Um, here are some other features. And we do this two-stage learning where you learn the CCG parts with the annotated form and later um, derived by this feature strongly. And then we evaluate comparing to the gold thing whether it gets the entire expression correct as well as sub-expressions. Uh, here are some results. Uh, we see that the previous semantic parser, which didn't um, consider this open schema issue, um, was not able to generalize well to this new data set and new challenges. And covering uh, this large scale lexical statistics as well as bringing this open schema helped it learn to map the correct um, logical forms. So in this talk, I talk about how are we going to do question answering with knowledge bases as well as a little bit about how are we going to bring in the raw text into the knowledge base to answer the questions. As one that was in the previous talk, this is obviously not the only way to go. Um, sometimes people have built um, knowledge base on the fly or deviated from mapping exactly to the knowledge base to get the answer by doing metrics factorizations or used um, knowledge base and text together to answer the questions. And I think these are really interesting um, directions to go. Um, it's a little bit of stress, but we have another work coming on in ACL when you're trying to extract subjective relations and um, in, uh, things from entities from the documents and try to reason about it. And I would be happy to talk about it later. Um, this is the end of my talk, and thanks for listening. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> So when you're doing the open IE relations, mm -hmm. are you doing any predicate creation there by clustering those, like I mentioned that people have done, or you're just treating, you can only match it if that exact string is used in the future to refer to that relation? Um, so we just match the string as, yeah, to have to match the exact string that was in the original sentence. So that seems like an obvious next step is to move into ontology yeah. creation. Yeah. I, yeah, I think that would be a great next step. Sure. Uh, what do you think are the ways to combine text with knowledge base? So here you combine uh, knowledge base and other knowledge bases. 
like, what do you think is the best way to combine text when you have a lot of spaces? Um, I think it's a really open research problem, and I think the most of problem that one of the reasons that that's not studied very well is that most data set, question answering data set that we have is either restricted, it can be answered by knowledge base, or it can be answered by text. There is no real large scale data set that can like, you know, you can answer it either from knowledge base or text. So I think obvious next step actually, I think would be the creation of those kind of data set. Um, okay, so we have to stop here. Next time, <laughs> speaker again. Okay.